And welcome back to the 33rd Annual Music City Classic. We'll be right back in one second. Brilliant cut. For $100. Probably the best I've ever done. The guy's still sitting on the stage, right? Robert's going to do the old random generator. So what we're hearing here is we're going to have the Dart Connect Bot Challenge one more time. As uh, they're going to, I think it's Christine. Didn't quite hear the last name, but yeah, we're going to have a Dart Bot Challenge. So what this is, is they're going to play level, tw level 12 on the Dart Bot. Um, one leg, if they best, 
the level 12, they get $100. So a little unique thing that we're doing here um, that they've kind of splashed in um, just as an added bonus. So we're going to do this one real quick, and then we're going to head right into our doubles, men's doubles, because I think we got Gates and Lauby on deck. We do. Yes, it's going to be a great matchup here. Um, this was a fun uh, little little extra added bonus to the tournament. Um, the first time around, it exceeded expectations. I think it was because the bot on 12 was really nice and went out in 18 darts or something. <laughs> yeah. um, which might be as low as round ever in the history of DC 12. But um, we'll see if... Uh, our contestants up to the challenge. They may grab someone else. All right. Yeah, I got to recall. And we saw it last time. The crowd was actually a little into it. Yeah, oh, yeah. Well, this is halfway through a tournament instead of, like, at the beginning of the start of a tournament. I think that the, they do better to have it at the beginning of tournaments. Because you have to ask the question legitimately, is he still here? And this is where this idea becomes worrisome <laughs> from time to time. Because it could go, go on for a minute till we find somebody. It already has. <laughs> Looks like Trevor was like, hey, they want you for something. And she said, go ahead. Go ahead. Yep. And then Trevor says, do you want me to throw it? <laughs> We just need a person that is in the room. <laughs> For a chance at a hundred dollars, just I'll nothing. do it. Yeah. I'll do it. I'm sure you would. All right, it looks like we have ourselves a contestant. Going to play Dark Connect, level 12. Chance at $100 if he beats him. Nothing like a little bit of pressure to get the heart pumping. For some reason, there feels like there's an electricity on the stage now. The 
fact that Will does not understand that joke is kind of sad. I said it feels like there's a new electricity on the stage now. Look at his shirt. Sorry, I was focused on changing my battery because somebody couldn't handle it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm man. like working with prima donnas here. I'm telling you. Prima donna for sure. The goat himself, Will Stewart. Unfortunate seven there. That's all right. Yeah, it straightens it out here. Like the 92, again, is just impressive to start off with that. Of course, the Dark Knight decided to start with the 140. Making almost crushing all hope early in this. There's a ton for the DC 12. Only 45 scored. Tim Way, I think, doing a high. Maybe that's a German three. I'm not sure. That's a love you. I know. <laughs> love you too, buddy. Hey, that's a great first dart. We'll even take that second dart. Look Ooh, at that. A big nice 135. Jinx Yomi Coke. Raven. Doesn't leave a finish. But you never know. Maybe DC 12 is going to suck for once. Ooh, kind of did. Left a two dart finish. That's actually a little bit of a, of a look here. You never know. So will it be back to back 18s? We'll find out. 12 for tops. DC 12. I, wanted to, I wanted to say 52 with the one next to it just to, just to make everyone go nuts. <laughs> and there it is. The old third dart. 18 darter Give again. Give 18 dart attempts at it. That's doable. Yeah, someone down there is like, I'm going to win $100. They call my name. <laughs> well, there we go, folks. There's your DC challenge, DC bot challenge as we will continue on with our coverage. And we're going to get a men's doubles match coming up here. Hopefully, Lauby Allegedly. and uh, Gates. We'll yeah, we, we were eyeballing that one. There's also the women's singles going on currently, so there's a lot to choose from. Um, we have options, as they say. Uh, currently, right now, quarterfinal number one is Larry Butler and Alex Bellman taking on Danny Morales and Anthony Ciancolo. Uh, semifinal or quarterfinal number two, Joe Efter and Hossie Hicks taking on Patrick Gibson and Wayne Harvey. Uh, Jason Brand and Joe Cheney, yep, the ESPN athlete Joe Cheney, are taking on Dustin Holt and Danny Pace uh, right now in quarterfinal number three, and then quarterfinal number four that is not on a board that has our number. Um, is Stephen Phillips and Ross Minty taking on Leonard Gates and Danny Lobby Jr. So remember when we promised you a quarterfinal? They are all assigned to a board, and none of them are one through three. <laughs> oh, no. Well, I'm guessing when they were doing our DC, they probably got called out. So let's well. go see if they're on a match or not, and we'll see if we can pull them.
All right, guys, welcome back to the 33rd annual Music City Classic here live in Nashville, Tennessee at the Senesta Nashville Airport Hotel, a.k.a. the Igloo. And I got to be honest with you, folks, I believe, as the saying goes, every time someone says the word Igloo, a Fahrenheit loses its degree because <laughs> it's getting colder by the minute in this place. <laughs> so far today, we've had... Uh, no hypothermia reports, but it is early. Uh, this is quarterfinal matchup. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this one. It should be a good one. Gates and Lowby taking on uh, Ross Minty versus uh, and uh, Phillips. Yeah, Stephen Phillips. Yeah. Um, this is actually kind of a crazy stat for you. Danny Lobby Jr. struggling early on in this tournament in three matches. He's only averaging a 67 point something, which is that is about crazy. 20 points below what he would look as a minimum average to have. Uh, however, his uh, his partner, it's good to have partners sometimes, and his partner is uh, um, Playing Leonard well. Gates, who's averaging 106.23 in the same <laughs> amount of legs and in, uh, in matches. So... As the old saying go, just strap me on your shoulder or your yeah. back and take me along the way. Soldier's back has got to be hurting at this moment. They also were two of the three to win mixed trios earlier this afternoon. Soldier, Lobby, and Callie West. Getting that done as you're looking at the diddle to start. And they would pull it if it's in the 25 uh, and blocking. They can they can request that, even though it is measurement. That's kind of an interesting, I guess, thing about it. But it's 501, single in, double out, doubles here at the Music City Classic. Quarterfinal number one. So eight teams remain in this. Lobby and Soldier have thrown a lot of darts today. Is that going to factor in for these two at any point? Uh, no, not these two guys. You'd think not. Surely not when it's only not. a race to two in each in each match, right? Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think that's going to matter much. I think they're experienced players. They get on the board a lot. I know that Gates is definitely a player that loves his practice. Yeah, Gates loves his practice. He's one of those guys that'll hit the. You, why you did that there? <laughs> <laughs> Just because I thought you it was going to be that louder. Was not the end, <laughs> the end spot. <laughs> you knew it wasn't. <laughs> Sorry, you guys probably can't actually hear it. Um, but yeah, no, Gates is the kind of guy that he'll go into his hotel room. He'll practice all night long. I mean, he brings right. a board with him wherever he goes. Darts is his profession. Yep. It's not a hobby. Right. This is not something. That's not a second job. It's not a second career choice. It's not his backup plan. And I um, and Danny Lobby Jr. is also taking that uh, professional approach to darts now. I've gained a lot of respect for Gates. I thought I had the typical mindset myself before I kind of got to know him a little bit. Of if he doesn't know you, yeah. and you go up to him at the wrong time, he will rub you the wrong way, hands down. Mm -hmm. It because he just he's in his element. He's trying to yep. focus on his money. Is how he makes a living. So, um, but since I have gained a full respect for him because he's just, if you understand him, the right time to come up and talk to him. Danny Lobby Jr. throws in a 180, and talk about an ideal moment. 28 left after that. That's how you set up your partner, and we just mentioned that Gates has been the one throwing very well in this tournament, averaging 106 uh, in his three matches. Danny struggling a little bit, but that 180 really, really helped. It say, will be double seven. I don't think Gates likes that one. He likes the 26, not the 28. <laughs> he got it, though, on dart three. Yeah, he does love the 26, even when he only needs 24. Yep, yep, that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> A little funny there for him. Why not? Again, earlier today, he did on 262 remaining, and Danny Baggish said, I love him so much more now. He did shoot at the 18 on the first dart. <laughs> hey oh, Which is the exact right setup dart. 
But here we go. Phillips getting the start in this second leg. Looking for a big one. Yeah, Steven has been very uh, impressive, and there's a great 180 start for Steven Phillips. Danny's starting to get it going here on the stage. A steady ton. He has a 180 in this match. Minty ruins the nine dart attempt. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Trying to one up Simon and and Damon. Well, <laughs> look at this nice 140 there. Yeah, I mean, the scoring power of Lobby and Soldiers almost an unfair partnership. It's cheating. It's a cheat code. A little bit, but both these guys, I'm sure, love the partnership that they have because they're both quieter guys. They both kind of keep to themselves. Um, they're not going to approach it as let's communicate every time and all that stuff. They're they're going to be the type of partners that just rely on each other to do the right thing because they know each other's skill level. Mm -hmm. Well, you look at last night, too. We were mentioning, actually, about the blind draw. Lauby and Kevin Luke got partnered together, and they fell in the top four. It just yep. shows you that no matter who your partner is, anything Ooh. can stumble upon the way. Oh. Soldier. He put the he put his line in the water, but didn't didn't catch the bite. And throws a slack third in the setup as well. But Danny will get three darts at 86. I like those odds. Oh, a little Robin Hood action. Ah, we haven't seen that. In a while here on the stream. 218's needed for Bull here. Bullseye. Whew. Just off to the left. This 148 is a must go, or else Soldier is going to be coming back with 25 remaining. That was a good looking first start. Just drops below the trip. But he's going to put a lot of pressure on this 25 for Soldier. Leaving 68. Needs another one of those. There Triples he gets finds it. it. Good what a shot. time for a 140. Nine for double eight. And the match. He loves gets it in two. He loves that double eight. Loves it. It's the devil's finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we go, folks. Leonard Gates, Danny Lobby will advance to the semifinals. Hang tight, and we'll have another one coming your way here as we enter in the semifinals of men's doubles here at the 33rd Annual Music City Classic. Stay with us, guys. Don't go anywhere. So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're a to Z darts .com, and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country. But don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert. We developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. 
Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching.
Alrighty, update everybody. Looks like we're getting our semifinals called up to the stage. We're getting Jason Brandon, Joe Chaney taking on Leonard Gates and Danny Lowby. So that's going to be a great matchup coming yeah, our way. Yeah, how about that? So you have ESPN athlete Joe Chaney and CDC match play champion for 2022, uh, Jason Brandon, who's walking up on stage right now, taking on our two of the three of mixed trips 601 champions. That's going to be a heck of a battle. Yeah, it should be a good good finale here, or a good uh, semifinal here yeah. before we head into our fi finals. It looks like on the bracket that they... What, is there something going on with that other quarterfinal? Yeah, I was just uh, that actually just finished up. Okay, good. Yeah, they got they got assigned to eight, and then they went to thirty one, so they just left it blank. So that's why we didn't see the uh, match in progress, which is kind of weird. But so I hope this is the case. But are they holding the second semifinal? I think after this one, I then? think they're going to put it on the right hands or the other hands of the stage, possibly. Ooh. Yeah, it is what it is. Hopefully, by the time these guys get done, we'll have enough time to move them on over. So a fun story about Danny's uh, pants, uh, there's like little bleach spots all over them that he actually did himself on accident. He was like, but it looks pretty cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> so he, he likes the, the way they turned out. I'll get everything set up for us so we're ready to go. How about this matchup? Sherry Malone taking on Marley's Keel in the top 16 of the women's singles. Wow. That's a good one. Look at that name. It has a l number in it. But that's a one. Yeah, it's Was it mistyped then? Yeah. All right, that is Leonard Gates. Looks like there's two people that are going to duke it out for the who's going to cork. Ken Rip standing up there on stage. There's some ugly, some ugly guy named Will. There is our CDC 2022 match play champion. Taking that title yesterday. Yeah, I thought they were going to have to fight for it. <laughs> Danny Lobby Jr. right there. I didn't know if you realized that was Ken Rip. Yeah, I saw him. Yeah. I saw Ken. I said hi to him yesterday. He was like one of the nicest humans. Oh, yeah, by far. He did uh, ask if we're going to see a uh, altercation this weekend because it's a common occurrence for when me and him are at the same tournament. We see a throwdown at some point. Oh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. That's a real thing? <laughs> that is a real thing. I have my eyes on a few people out there. <laughs> Not to fight, but like that could possibly fight each other. Uh. But for the most part, it's, it seemed like it's been very laid back and calm. Oh, yeah, for sure. There is Joe Chaney, Chainsaw. ESPN athlete. Actually was our number one seed for the Bullshooter Invitational. Yeah. And uh, ran into a, a chainsaw of his own named Randy Fern. That he did. That he did. Randy, of course, threw a nine darter on the Bullshooter stream on Friday. Thursday. On Thursday, yes. Thursday, yeah. Which yeah, that was cool. good to see. I was wondering if we were going to see at least a single perfect, and we did. It would have been nice to see it on ESPN, but... Yeah, there was a couple opportunities there. Alex Bellman got a couple into it. They are shooting at the center there, but not on that board. Not and on that not, one either. Not that angle either. <laughs> Get everything situated here. There we go. That's right. We've had back to back to back to back matches, so I understand <laughs> not being so. Whoa! Up. <laughs> that All never right. happens. Here they go. Danny starts off with a 140. He has looked great since uh, I brought up the fact that he was averaging 66 for the tournament. He's already raised that to well above 70 for the tournament based on the last match. Gates still almost averaging 100 which is so impressive in doubles. It goes without saying, I think, how ridiculous that is. David Fadham in this event only played one match, but he averaged 105. 
I don't know who his partner is, but I hope, but I'm gonna guess his partner feels bad about that one. I'll be starting off with a triple. Danny is just, I mean, wiring into a ton. That could have easily have gone a 140 or 180. He looks focused too. I think Soldier and Danny were just, they're set up to try and dominate today. That's exactly what they're trying to do. Only a slack 60. So Joe can put some pressure on this 120. I wonder how weird it is for him to go from steel tip to soft tip, or from soft tip to steel tip. He threw a lot of soft tip the past couple of days. Yeah, he did, didn't he? And, and only 60 there for lobby. I think he throws a slightly heavier dart on the steel tip, too. I think he's around, I think he's 23 or 25. Jason Brandon setting up beautifully there. 60 needed for Gates. Leaves 24 after 15. Up double 10. Now he's got to go back up to double 5. Oh, and he released it too early and he knows it. And now Joe Chaney had a chance to steal the leg. As you can see, uh, the second semifinal also on the stage. Yeah, Butler. Getting set up, ready to go. Butler Smel uh, Spellman, Efter, and uh, Efter and uh, Hazy Hicks. Yep. Who's as had a great weekend? As Cheney pops that double there. Yep, one to nothing. Cheney and Brandon stole that leg too, and Jason Brandon just. Stole the start, so they'll have to break the throw in order to stay in this match. Look at that, 93.94. That's the thing. Jason Brandon and, and Joe Chaney are a deadly duo, man. They are oh, yeah. deadly. Of course, we are in their home state for this, Nashville, Tennessee. I have put on every layer that I own. Besides sweats, <laughs> and uh, guess what tomorrow's outfit's going to be? It's definitely sweats. Look at that one on the lady. Rum, rum, the chainsaw. <laughs> Throws into ton 80. And Soldier, that, the first one's uh, low. Just below. Look at this from Brandon and Chaney with the throw, just making it Almost impossible for Lobby and Gates to, to win this leg. Set on 84 after 9. And not on a finish. So they have 6 if they need it from 84. What potentially to take out Gates and Lobby. Could be an 11 dart leg here. He's going to set it up. Another 16 leaves double 16. I think that's smart. Just go ahead and lay it up. No reason to go for everything. This is usually when Gates throws in a big number just to knock on the door and let them know they're there, and there it is, 140. Double but the 16. CDC match play champion takes it out in one dart, a 13-dart leg. Averaged 103.66 as a team for that match. Um, uh, that's tough to do anything about. What a quick match, man. They could have definitely held, they could probably still hold up that second match to bring <laughs> it on over. My, oh playing. my. Let me go ahead and see what I can do to pull that scoreboard though. Hold on one second. Yeah, we can at least have that up there. There's not a PTZ out there, is there? For, uh, for uh, not on that for a board game. On that third board, we uh, unfortunately don't have one. But let me see what I can at least that would be a horrific angle. Give you on uh, something here. The scoreboard is up there, so you guys can keep track there. That's not bad, except Ken. Ken Rip ruining everything. Although, thank you for chalking. 
chocolate swirl. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Well, we'll give you this angle, folks. We'll keep it right here. Let this let this one play out for you. We'll give you this angle. Ken's gonna hate this. He's he really is. But like, really, you gonna do me like that? <laughs> at the same time, he was nice to us until this moment. <laughs> at least we can somewhat see the board here. Here's Joe Efter. You did not just say you can see some of the board here. <laughs> you did not just say that. I did. You can see some of the board on the back of You can Ken see the jersey. corner. You can see the corner. The, the very top corner, <laughs> le like <laughs> left-hand corner of this. Hey, it's either that or that. Which well, one do you exactly, want? Exactly. Uh, no, there's no right answer. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you don't lie to people and say you can see the board. <laughs> I think it is smart for them to split that difference, though. Give them a little space. Give them a little room. We'll keep it right here. And you guys can at least see the match in progress as we figure out who will meet our uh, finalists, Jason Brandon and Joe Chaney, in just a moment's time.
All right, guys, welcome back here for the finals of the Pants event. Uh, no, this is the 33rd annual <laughs> Music City Classic at the Sinesta Nashville Airport Hotel, a.k.a. The Igloo. Have you ever entered into a hockey rink and watched a hockey match? Or And uh, it's just you have to bring a sweatshirt and, and pants because you know it. Like because it's miserably cold in that place no matter what you do. I would not be shocked if there's ice underneath this floor and that this was actually a ice or a hockey arena, <laughs> like in its actual spare time. A little it would be a perfect place for it as a dome anyway. Hey, you know what, though? I'd rather have it a little bit chilly than way too warm. Definitely less smelly this way. Yeah, yep, definitely less smelly, and you can always take layers off. You, or you can always put layers on. You can't take them off. Yeah, unless you just run out of layers to put on because it's <laughs> so freezing um, and your extremities are now uh, frozen. Uh, big trip 20 start here for Brandon. Looking for a 180. Oh, a 125 for Jason Brandon. Let's run through this. This is the finals here of the men's doubles 501 format. And we got four players that um, it's no shock that these four players are here. Uh, you're looking right there, Alex Bellman, the ESPN Bull Shooter champion from yesterday, live on ESPN at 11 a.m. That's still crazy to hear. I know. <laughs> and then this is actually the only competitor he did not face in that event, Joe Chaney, a.k.a. Chainsaw, another ESPN athlete uh, representing the Final Four there. And I'm happy he didn't wear those socks. Oh, my word, right? The socks and shoe combo. Let me tell you what. That is an interesting choice of uh, I didn't bring something. Cheney's not the guy that cares, let's just be <laughs> honest. Cheney could give two bleeps, if you know what I'm saying. Oh, I know what you're saying. <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, Jason Brandon only 41 scored there, but Alex Bellman's ad averaging 86.75 for this tournament, which, again, is – very, very good for five matches of doubles. Um, Larry actually has the lowest three-dart average of any of the competitors in the top uh, in the semifinals uh, and lower. But he's right there kind of at the even with fourth through eighth on that list. Um, Joe Chaney is sitting in third at 78.87, and Jason Brand is actually in fourth at a 74.67. So probably the most consistent duo will be Chaney and Brandon. But we both know that Larry Butler is a legend of darts for numerous reasons, and one of those reasons being uh, he can turn up in big moments. He's won countless, countless tournaments. 150 look for Jason. Not going to have an opportunity now with that single seven. So 24 here for Alex Bellman. Take a 1-0 lead here in the final. And he hits it. Alex Bellman wins the ESPN Bull Shooter, and now he's one leg away from winning a steel tip event the next day. Here's the thing, him and Larry Butler won the Las Vegas Open double, so they're talented players when they team up. Wow. And nice. Spellman usually takes the reins on most of the diddle work and starts. It and says, you know what? says a lot. It, it does. Uh, also, if I'm Larry, yeah, it's his turn to, to put in the work there. <laughs> he can carry that load. Now nah, you go ahead. I've done that you forever. Get, you're closer. Bobby did that too. Exactly. Him. You're closer. <laughs> Jason Brandon finding the triple with the first start usually follows it with at least one more. Unlucky to only get a ton there. You also notice Alex Spellman was also the only one of the four competitors that made the ESPN that had hair. Oh, man. Hey. Okay. I'm telling you, I just need to shave my head bald and I have a better chance of I guess you just got the being better, better opportunity. <laughs> Aerodyna here. Aerodynamics. Right here, it's 50-50 split on. And they're not even on the same team. <laughs> they're opponents. The start there for Brandon and Cheney was huge because 
it's these diddles. Every every leg diddle is really important. Larry is just killing the <laughs> the entire board now. One seven four. We've seen Larry elect to go to the downstairs nineteens more than he is starting on the twenties. It's crazy to see that, but it's working out for him. He's just deadly on those nineteens. If you did not tune us tune in with us yesterday, Larry actually in one match had a one seven seven, one seven four, one seven one, uh and a one eighty. And a one eighty. The cycle as you yep. called it. Look at that. Scoring back example. to back <laughs> one seven fours from Spellman and Butler. I think it's time to set off some dynamite. Boom goes the dynamite. <laughs> and look at this. Joe Cheney finding <laughs> right in the triple again. Well, they're about to go broom goes the janitor with <laughs> one, a clean two, sweep five. on this one. Yeah. That, if you blinked, you're going to miss this. This is for an 11 dart leg. Tops for what's got to be one of the highest averages ever for a doubles pair. Oh! And he hits it in 12. There is your finals. That was easy. My uh, goodness. Just a little 120 average. <laughs> no big deal at all. 120 average from Spellman and Butler to win this stop, one. I'm going to stop setting up like stats before the match starts and just enjoy the moment that anything can happen at any time with these guys. I don't even think Spellman and Butler can believe it. Look at them just sitting there. They're just laughing at it because there's nothing else they can do. <laughs> Look at this finish here right in the heart for Double Butler. 10 for the win. Wow. 2-0 victory for Larry Legend. My Legend grows. word. My word. Well, hang on to your seats, folks. We got women's singles coming your way, and then we'll have men's singles and women's doubles to round out our evening. Hang tight. We'll be right back as Butler is taking a picture of that 120 yeah, he average. Should. That's <laughs> you not should. That's a bad average for uh, doubles. That's insanity. All right. I'll be right back. <laughs>
All right, welcome back to the 33rd annual Music City Classic live here in Nashville, Tennessee. This is put together by the Greater Nashville Darting Association. Uh, we are at the Sinesta Nashville Airport, a.k.a. the Igloo. <laughs> you know, like, the really nice feeling when you get into bed for, like, <laughs> and it's, like, a cool feeling, and, it, like, it sends chills down your body, and then, like, it goes away to, like, a nice warmth? Well, imagine that without the chill going away. <laughs> And if you do that, that is exactly how it feels in this place. You were coming up with some goodies on this one, let me tell you. Well, I, I need to make sure that the viewing audience that has not experienced just the level of freezing <laughs> that this place, uh, it's, a, it's a miracle anyone's averaging anything, honestly. Um, the boards are going to freeze by tomorrow morning. But anyway, I digress. We are here for the Women's Singles 501 opening a double out, single in, double out event. This is Tracy Firetag uh, taking on Marlise Keel. That was Marlise Keel shooting right there. <laughs> I was about to this say, that was Tracy very Fire confusing. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you made me look up real quick and go, yep, whoop. You snapped your head up there. I, I saw it out of the corner of my eye, and I knew I had made a mistake of some kind, but I actually was just doing it in the reverse order. <laughs> Marlise, sponsored by Cosmo and Fit Flight see there her jersey yeah it has her own uh, barrel with Cosmo these ladies both averaging in the mid 50s for the tournament and you can see uh, those averages don't look correct at all no they, they are I'm just a liar um, <laughs> They're both throwing above that right now. I, if that sticks, that'll be... Uh, they both can do it. So that'll be a great result here. This is a quarterfinal matchup here in this women's singles 501. The men's singles 501 just started, and those are still in some top 256 matches. So quite a long way to go in that tournament still. Yeah, and I think we're actually... I went up there and asked about... Uh, what you know? What their plan was? If this was their th their schedule last year, and he said actually they had used to have mixed doubles on Saturday night, but they since took that out because they didn't finish till the wee hours of the morning last year. So, well, um, forever grateful for that. Yeah, yep. Yeah, but he said the way it's running this year is we're on time and then starting the other event, on time, starting the next event. So he said maybe next year we'll add that again. And I said, or you could just the hey we might have a blind draw we might not kind of deal you and just burn it forever eh. don't yeah. bring it back i'm i mean mixed doubles is nice I'm just kidding but at the same time there, when you have a bunch of events like the pro singles and stuff like that it is hard to get all those events in oh for sure it, but i will say this they have timed this out beautifully mm -hmm. i am i've been pleasantly surprised with the amount of on time it's actually been well honestly we were just looking they at the schedule perfectly and we we're like we might have time to get a nice little bite to eat tonight oh all yeah, right. as long as certain people are getting done at the same time, and Ooh. hopefully they're not listening in right this second. Uh, yell that for Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't thinking him at all, so that's weird that you would say that. I sneezed. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. They were just calling out our bestest friends' names. <laughs> I actually need to go in there and check on that uh, Evo or Evolution and Junior tour. I think it's just the Junior tour tonight. Yep. Oh, okay. My bad. Hey, oh. You sounded terrible. That's a beautiful voice. Todd Martin saying BDG is there. I didn't know. Yeah, he's definitely been here all weekend. Been on their stream a few times. It's impossible to miss him. I mean, Playing he's well. just a giant. Someone did ask the question, pose the question earlier when Elliot Milk was on the stream. Look at that. Ooh. Big finish for Tracy. Huge finish in this first to three leg quarterfinal match. I mean, what a great combination there. Made that look easy. Tracy actually top four in that Nauda uh, yep. qualifier last or yesterday. Yeah, and was up there at the top of the averages, too. Yeah, just succumbing to uh, Sh Sherry Mal Malone. Yes, Maloney? Malone, yep. Malone. Yeah, they had a little bit of double trouble in the last leg, and I know that she's probably kicking herself for that yeah, one. Yeah, certainly so. Certainly so. But she did stomp back. Did she win the pro event last night? That is something that I cannot answer for you. I'm pretty sure she won the pro event. 
Yeah. It mashes all together, but I'm pretty sure she won that last night. You might want to get this, the spammer that's in there. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. If you appreciate want it. We love all of you that do not post links in our chat. <laughs> if you do post links in our chat, make sure that uh, you just are you're fine getting uh, getting the bump. <laughs> Jonathan's saying that really need more streaming boards. Um, we have two streaming boards set up. It, the unfortunate thing is that it's just tough to keep big 180. Marley's keel. Boom goes that dynamite. Throws in a big score there. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we can get much more streaming boards than the two we have. Let's be honest here. That um, is that is shockingly the first 180 of the event today. Of for the women's? For the women's singles. Holy cow. So there you go. I get a 180 maybe like once a month or so. <laughs> it's always a fun time when I do. Do you take pictures of it? Oh, especially if it's during school. Like I, I save it for the entire school day and show all my kids what I did. <laughs> One thirty two remaining for Marlies. Gave that to herself after the one eighty the previous turn. Not quite getting where she wants to get from one thirty two. Ninety's a little too dark combination though. But Tracy knows that she can put a little pressure here. It might start to creep in. Maybe she overthought that pressure. Bullseye here would leave one six seven. Gets the trip to leave the finish anyway. Marlies leaves fifty nine. So she's kind of stumbling to the finish line here after the one eighty. Tracy did not start on the bull, so now she does not have a finish after hitting a single twenty. 85 left, trip 15, or trip 19 would have been the route there. 19 for tops. Oh, no, misses the big number. 52 left. Got to hit a big number. Does that there, tops. Oh, drop the heck out of that dart. And Tracy finds herself in a... Spot she was not thinking she was going to get to in this leg. Tops for a 2-0 lead. Oh, good look at it. Sitting on 20, hoping she returns. Only 19 scored for Marley, so Tracy's going to get another look at this double 10. Gets it on dart one and a 2-0 score line. Double trouble. The problem there for Marlies. How you doing, brother? Oh, doing well, doing well. Taking care of some the YouTube chat and all that good stuff, too, because we're the moderators as well. So, oh. <laughs> Well, it's a good thing we finally checked on that for the first time. Oh, yeah. Some compl complaints about our over-the-shoulder shot on our third board. Well, we don't have streaming capabilities on that third board. Only the two, which, yep. honestly, two is more than some people provide. They just provide the one, so. I feel like you're personally attacking me. <laughs> 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 nah, it is what it is. Just explaining that, you know, that is what it is. We got two boards, um, and we are able to get most of it. But you got to understand, when one semifinal's going on, they don't want to put the other one right next to it. They want to have a little space, so that's probably the reason why. A leaf just fell in here. That's not terrifying. Um, the igloo is supposed to be a force field. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, it does hold in air nicely. <laughs> Tracy only gets 57. But yeah, you're right. And a lot of people don't understand that it, we're not running this tournament. No. Um, it, there's only, we don't have power on what gets sent our way or what we can do. We can always 
you know, keep harping and, and stuff like that. But you also have 18 jobs you're doing back here. Yeah, we're I mean, we're streamers. We're not tournament directors. That's right. the main thing. And we leave the tournament directing to the staff. And, yeah, we can advise them on certain matches. But most of our goal is to let them run the tournament and then, you know, put on a good show as well um, from the matches that we get. So... Fernando from Making a Murderer Capital of the World, Manitowoc, Wisconsin. Ooh, Manitowoc. <laughs> Hometown of uh, Netflix. What is that? Yeah, what is that? Uh, Making a Murderer? Mm hmm. Good old Wisconsin. It's the only reason I know how to, sp how to pronounce that, and I've probably still pronounced it wrong. <laughs> All right, Marley is just trying to set up from 171. Unfortunately, only gets 28. Tracy's been fi finishing phenomenally, and look at this, just setting up. Great first start in the triple. 77 scored. Going to stay there, gets 78, leaves 120. Marlies needs a big trouble here. Does not get it. Only 21 scored. She's just really struggled to set up her outs. Tracy cannot finish from 120 now. 105 remaining. That's a great second dart. Options here on dart number three. And puts a lot of pressure on this 122 for Marlies Keel. It almost has to go if she wants to try and stay in this match, and it does not go after the first dart. 32 for Tracy to move on to the semifinals. Double 12. Oh, whew. That's the exact route I would go with 32 remaining, I can tell you that much. Uh, hits it. And there's three a 0 scoreline, a little bit of a shock there. Pretty good little clapping section there for Tracy as well as that she was pulls impressive. out the win. Very impressive by Tracy. Uh, Tracy's a great shot. She really is. Let's see if she can keep riding this out as she advances into the semifinal. Hold on to your seats, folks. We'll be right back with the semis and then the finals. Don't go anywhere.
So you want to get into darts, but you're not sure how. We can definitely help with that. We're A to Z darts.com and we've been a dart specialty store for over 30 years. We have the greatest variety of darts in the country. But don't worry, we can narrow down that selection for you. Whether you're a complete beginner or a full-on expert, we developed our own colonial brand to offer an inexpensive line of darts, dartboards, and accessories. So you can get into the game without breaking the bank. Join our amazing community by going to azdarts.com. So in preparation for a recent event, I put this board to the test with four to six hours of practice per week for a month straight. This gave me an opportunity to see how this board holds up as well as give you all that honest opinion you've been waiting for. After just a few throws, I was able to tell that this board was a touch softer than popular brands I've used in the past. Admittedly, this had me a little scared thinking this would lead to a fairly quick wear down. Instead, after a week, I was still at the point where I felt the board did not need to be rotated. Overall, after a month and around 20 hours of play, I was thoroughly surprised by how well this board held up. Yes, there was some aesthetic wear and tear, but I do feel there was a decrease in the amount of bounce that I had, which I directly contributed to the board softness. For me, this is a winner for both new and experienced players who like to put their hours in. Alrighty folks, don't forget we're your partner in darts. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to reach out. Thanks for watching.
All right, welcome back here live, the 33rd annual Music City Classic in Nashville, Tennessee. We are here, Sean Green, Will Stewart, USA Darts Productions, for the semifinal of the women's singles. Liz Tynan taking on Trish Grezik, two of the best dart player, female dart players in North America. Well, you were uh, in a WDA qualifier champion yesterday, Liz Tynan. Yep. Going to take on Trish Grezik of Canada, who, yeah, there's no denying, she's a quality shot. She usually is up there in the top four yeah. for most of the tournaments she goes to. Yeah, she went on quite a tear here recently in the last few months of just winning all these women's events that she decided to play in. Has had a not a successful weekend so far, but she's trying to get back used to her steel tip setup from her soft tip darts as she played a lot of soft tip this past week. Yeah, she did play, uh, which I was surprised about at the ADA uh, National Championships that she chose to do that one. Because you can play both, right? Yeah, you can choose to do one or the other, or you can uh, mix and match. I play both. <laughs> I would play both. I'm just kidding. I would play soft tip, probably. Well, that's what it, was, it was like crazy to see like what Gates would choose, and Gates chose all steel. Did he? Yeah. That is very interesting, especially with the ESPN Bullshooter thing, the next event that he was playing in. Right? Hmm. Maybe he feels like steals. If that doesn't his tell game you something, and goes around, you know. Yeah, if that doesn't tell you something about how he feels about a steel tip game versus a soft tip game and the importance of it, I don't know what will. Looks like the other semifinal is going to be on board number three, which we do not have a direct camera angle to. So if you're on YouTube, you know, keep your comments to yourself on that. <laughs> Well, that's the thing. That's why they do that. They want to feature both on the stage, but unfortunately, we can't get, unless I add two two more cameras, which is difficult, uh, or we set up the tripod. But being on the stage, it's very difficult to set up that high-rise tripod to get right. everything. Have you guys Ooh. noticed that there's been a, a lot more um, practice starts thrown before matches are starting? You know why? Because it's colder. so cold. <laughs> yeah. So cold, they can't even feel when their arms warm. Because it never is. They are diddling up here, closest to the bowl for the start. Looks like Trish lost based on her facial feature. And we're getting going. Liz Tynan starting it off. Liz from Chicago, Illinois. You mentioned already our NAWDA champion from yes from yesterday. Look at that angle for Trish. I asked her about that at Cherry Bomb. I said, your darts are going in at a little bit more of an angle than they normally do. She goes, yeah, it's the front-loaded new darts that I have. I said, she said, I really like them. It's just a little bit different than I'm used to. And it took me by surprise at Cherry Bomb when I saw her throwing with those and getting that kick on the flights. Yeah, it's, it's pretty that's significant. a pretty, pretty extreme angle. It almost looks like Count Danny likes his starts to lay. Yeah, which is not really... Not typical to be that for high. For Trish, yeah, for Trish. I mean, she's usually almost like that dart from, from Look uh, at that. Liz. Big 140. Here's going to be the storyline to pay attention to. Liz is going to be a heavy scorer, uh, a little bit more than Trish. Trish is going to be a little bit more um, mechanical on her outs. She's going to make those look a little bit more machine-like. Liz with a quick look downstairs to hit that trip 19. So to give you an update on the men's singles that I was watching, uh, Danny Lobby Jr. was down 2-1 to one to Jason Farnan, the number one Canada Canadian. Evolution Tour uh, player currently. And then... Uh, Danny just decided just to turn on a little bit. Just a little? Went a 13 darter, 12 darter, to, and said, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, I'm going to win this 3-2. to two. So excuse me, young man, you're in my way. You're not going to look at a double, that's for sure. <laughs> just threw it into a whole new gear there. Liz, double eight. Staying right there. 
Oh, just inside, but she'll come back. Not ideal to hit go inside on that last dart, though. Man, that first dart is straight up in the air. Yeah, it, it is. You can tell she's she's trying to find um, her typical lay as Liz takes leg number one. And look at that, 80, well, now 79.11 average there for Liz. Trish well behind her normal self. And it's not going to get much better here. 22 scored. You can tell it's just get, trying to get comfortable with uh, with her typical setup. That's why it's so impressive for someone like Leonard Gates, Alex Bellman, to be this good at soft and steel interchangeably. That's a great grouping. Yeah, she's Those are sitting all on a dime. Not able to find exactly where she's wanting to go. Chat, thank you guys for joining us here in Nashville, Tennessee, live at the Music City Classic. This is the semifinals of the Women's Singles 501 event. Going on behind you there is the very large field of the Men's Singles 501. There's well over 128 guys playing in that tournament. Well, this is the thing is this is not just the room that we have. We also have another area of, well, I believe they said 17 boards. Mm -hmm. So they are playing matches in there as well. That's a nice 140 pop from Liz. Yeah, we're seeing the scoring power really show up here for Liz. She's, she's a deadly combo. And I asked her about the NAWDA title. She's got two. Okay. I thought it was more than that, but she's got two. Finds it again right in the triple. I think she's Moves actually down using on dart number three. It's a single 19. 84 scored. I don't think she's using her signature darts from Super Darts either. I think she's using a different set. It's always interesting to see how people, what people use as their actual setup. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier, Danny actually. Looking yeah. back at an older set of of darts. Liz almost took out that ninety <laughs> or that one seventeen. Just drags the last dart inside the trip or the double twenty. I'm curious to see like Trish only sixty, well behind in this leg with the throw. So Liz for a sixteen dart hold or break a throw. Double five. Oh no. Bust it. Yeah, there it goes. Trish, we're going to look at the 160. Unfortunately, She's not, not going to be happy about that first one. Yeah, it wouldn't be at all. That's one of those, uh, is that in the trip 20 type of darts? Double 10 for a 2-0 score line. Doesn't get it done and actually leaves it a little bit squirrely. Trish being gifted one here. Got to take advantage of it. Oh. And those are actually Liz's darts. Okay. They are. They're just worn down a little bit more than I'm used to seeing. As I fumbled around the screen there. Aggressive on dart two. I like that move, but unable just to really attack. In that position, she might have wanted to split there if she was worried about that. Dredge is going to get one dart at a double, ideally. It's going to be double ten to steal the leg both on 10 now. You know, a little bit squirrely. Liz had a chance to win this in 16 darts, remember? Mm-hmm. Now oh. double one. That would have been one way to take out 10. Oh, no. Trish, it goes right at it. goes right at it. Oh, and she thought that was in. She started to walk forward. Oh. That was unlucky. That looked like it was in. There it is. Gets it anyway. <laughs> Oh, my. That was tricky business there. It looked like that was going to be a a tough look with her third dart. Yeah, I mean, it almost looked like it was impossible for it to go in there. Especially it wrapped over the top of the other barrel, which is even kind of crazier. Only 41 start for Liz. Trish, a little bit of an open door here to attack. That first dart kind of wiggled. 
So that's why she moves down quickly. Uh, Eric Damon asked, are you guys going to be streaming at the Seacoast Open again this year? Yeah, we'll be at uh, Witch City and Seacoast. So those are kind of um, pretty close to, to each other. So, yeah, Witch City and Seacoast. I think Witch City is not the weekend, but the previous weekend in front of Seacoast. So. Okay. Yeah, it's over that Halloween weekend, I believe, which is creepy because it's near Salem, Mass., Ooh. Kind of in that general area. That sounds wonderful. Yeah, a lot of that's a big tourist pop. Come Halloween. Ask Tom Sawyer about it; he'll tell you he hates it. Fair <laughs> enough. Does he live in that area? Yeah, he's uh. from that area, and usually the town gets flooded with people trying to see the old Salem witch house and whatnot. Takes a while to get through the streets. Adam Gothorp saying some great coverage and commentary, guys. New fan from England. Hey, Love there we that. go. Yeah, that's good to hear. We're trying our best to try to give you a, almost a PDC style. We're far from it, but almost a PDC style stream or PDC style esque stream. Not the commentary recently, but yeah, hot garbage. Every on once that in a one. every once in a while, we we were pretty decent. There's a one fifteen. Again, just the scoring not quite there, but Liz gifted her last leg. Had a chance at a 16 darter and took over 27 before Trish was able to take it out. Trish, of course, as far as like throws go, um, with no backswing, she doesn't take it back at all, but for just someone who goes forward with the dart, she does that perfectly. Liz has a little bit more movement in her throw with that pump, but you'll notice her elbow stays dead still. It does not move even a touch. Trish, you can tell, is I think she still ha she's gone back to those kites, which is her actual setup uh, for her steel tip, and you can just see the darts are dragging low on her, and she mentioned that yesterday as the struggle that she's had with, with those. Thank you. Yep. We're having to deal with a new scoreboard laptop now as ours, well, it did give out, and now it's just back there working, chugging along. <laughs> it's like, now that you don't need me. I'm, <laughs> now that you don't need me. I went crippled there for a second, and now we're, we're, we're back at it. <laughs> 42 left, leaves 32, although that was inside on the 10. That was interesting. Last dart. One five one for Trish will not go. She's gonna look to put a little bit of pressure on the thirty two and Liz has to have it in the back of their head that she missed quite a few darts of the double in the last leg. See if she can go ahead and collect on this one. Inside. Looking for double eight. One dart left. Gets and it. gets it. What a dart. Huge, huge dart in the match. Semi-finals, one leg away for Liz Tynan. Trish has got to win two in a row, which will include having to hold her throw right here. Imperative that she starts scoring a little bit better. 60 will do. That's a huge last start to catch that. Trish is from Ontario, Canada. Ontario, Canada. Well, around that area. Yeah, I'm going to say that's a big Providence, buddy. Yep. <laughs> They'll Somewhere get you on Ontario. that one. They will. No, she even told me that when we were in Canada, like her actual hometown and stuff, and I completely space it right now. Yeah, there's a lot of those little towns there in Ontario. St. Catharines is where... Uh, couple individuals are from that are down here. Yeah. Yeah, some of the kiddos. I, of course, have to always bring up Letterkenny with my Canadian <laughs> friends because I have to ask, like, how truthful is this? And she's like, yeah, that's basically a representation of my town that I'm from. <laughs> a 
Only 45 there. So the opening for Liz. Another one of those would be just handy. A ton will do. Trish almost has to go out from 245 and 6. And now that's much more difficult to do. Uh, that seemed like a weird switch to me, which makes me think it was a nice trip 18 on accident. Sixty-six score. Trying to do my math in my head there. Fifty-four, fifty-seven should be at sixty-six. Yeah. Adam says the setup looks class. I'd love to come to the U.S. and enter a comp. More than welcome to. Yeah, this is the thing about it is this setup is probably one of the best setups when it comes to like. I mean, stage pr uh, having a stage ready to go, having um, the numerous boards around. They've done a really nice job of uh, recovering from a couple issues they had last year. I mean, that's that's the honest truth here. Just bring a jacket. <laughs> that too. That too. <laughs> Definitely want to do that one. Liz again. Struggling to set up the way that she wants to on her out, and it just keeps opening up the door for Trish a little bit. It has made a difference in this match so far. Trish not going to be happy with those. Seventy-six can set it up. But Trish is going to have a look at this 105. See if she can convert here. Well, she got rid of the five. Oh, flights down into the single. So Tynan for the win here. Needing double tops. And hits it dart number one. Liz Tynan will move on to the finals. Taken out. Trish Grezik. And I am looking for the second ladies match. There it is. One to one scoreline in the second semifinal. You said one to one there? Yep. We for Stitches Presadio and Tracy Firetag, who we've already seen on stream. Firetag take a two one lead. Sitting on tops. Unfortunately, we do not have that board hooked up to our streaming capabilities. As uh, Stitches is uh, trying to get some stitches if there's some glass on the ground. <laughs> she's barefoot. She's very a uh, unique player. Let me tell you that. She's always rocking a, a, a one of a kind hat, yep. and then uh, she also plays barefoot a lot of the time. Well, let's be honest. It's just scary because if you're like me. You have a tendency to drop your darts from time to time, and you got to watch out for whatever you got on with yeah, sandals. Yeah, steel or nothing. tip is not a safe time to <laughs> to do that. Not really ideal, huh? We'll go ahead and pop up that scoreboard. It's not the ideal coverage, folks. We understand that, but hey, it's something you can see the score line. You can follow along as we go. So there's your score line right there. As Tracy's looking for double ten here. Doesn't hit it with the first start, obviously. Definitely did a little hoppity hop on that last start. Yeah, she she tends to take a step Open often it. with that with that uh foot, even on her first or second dart. It opens up the door a little bit here for stitches. Doing some math in her head, so that first start did not go exactly where she planned for it to go. This could almost be like an interesting game to play of what do you think she hit? <laughs> All right, one for double two. Got the one. 
Drags that one a little bit low. Did she get it? Nope. Goes inside on dart number three. We have a bust. So a little double trouble. Trying to roll along here, guys. Thank you for tuning in with us live in Nashville, Tennessee for the 33rd Annual Music City Classic. 2-1 lead now for Stitches. This is semifinal number two. The winner of this match will take on Liz Tynan, who's waiting in the finals. As we run through today's schedule, men's singles 501, single and double out is happening currently. They are not far along in that uh, tournament because there is well over 128 men playing in it. Women's doubles is coming up at 530 as well, which is right about now. So I'm sure that they're going to hold that up just a little bit as these ladies wrap up, or at least hold up those matches. <laughs> See the score line there? We cannot give you a, a good look at the board with the setup that we have, but uh, we can at least show you the players playing and give you a score line. Your other option, you can just watch along on Dark Connect and just see numbers go across the screen. That's all. That's up to you. Definitely based on the averages and and the feel of this, you wouldn't think that Liz is going to go into the final as as a pretty heavy favorite. But Tracy has had moments of brilliance. A lot of moments of brilliance, actually. Yeah, guys, so stay with us. We'll be back with the finals on an actual view screen um, or where you can actually see the board and the player because we're fancy like that. Um, but stay here as we're going to stay with this match until it ends. Race to three. Don't go anywhere.
Alrighty, folks. So just so you guys know at home, what's going to happen is we're going to get Tracy and Liz. They were thinking about putting a men's match up there just to give them a little bit of time. But Liz and, and Tracy are sitting right there. So I think we're going to go ahead and play it. And then we'll have a supporter, uh, or Jason Brandon versus Triple D, I think. And uh, we may see where we're at in the bracket and do a quick little break to do a slide for our winners here. So uh, we'll kind of play it by ear, but yeah, we'll get this final here going in just a second as Liz Tynan takes on Tracy Fair, Fair Tag? Fri Fire Tag? Fire Tag. Fire Tag. That was a tough one for me. I don't know why, but we'll get this one going. And this is a, I think, best of nine? Best of seven? It is a best of seven. Best of seven. So there race to four here in the finals. Good to see a little step up. I like that. I like that. All right, folks, well, hold on. We'll be right back with this good match here in the women's singles final. All right, welcome back here 
for the final of the women's singles 501 tournament. Liz Tynan, the winner of the NAWDA championship last night slash yesterday in her second final, playing against Tracy Firetag, who's been very consistently good all weekend long. I believe she's in her second final here. Uh, Average-wise, they are very similar. They're within point two nine of each other in average. It doesn't get much closer than that for the final. First nine average favors Liz. Average finish favors Tracy. So this might be a storyline of does power scoring win this or does uh, hitting your outs uh, in a more methodical way win this we're about to find out what are your thoughts bud yeah, i'm ready for an interesting final here i think liz has definitely got the uh slight advantage myself after that last go round at the board with uh trish gretzik but uh we'll see what what this calls for look at this a one two five for liz Crazy looking down at the 19s first. Now it's going to look up. Maybe a little early leg. Just trying to find how to not walk in front of the camera. And then also, <laughs> I just her talked darts. to her about this as well. And she was like, Yeah, I just got to remember to. <laughs> I might have to go out there. Just remind her real quick. Yep, just exit towards the score. Again, just blocking herself on the 19s. This time she stayed there. Going to continue to stay there. Liz just continues to fire in trips. This is a race to four here in the final. The women's singles 501. Tracy from the East Coast, Liz from Chicago, Illinois. Sets it up beautifully with a ton to leave 42. 42 after 15 is going to be uh, more than enough scoring power here. Did you yell at her? No, it was kind of funny. As when as soon as I walked out there, she walked to the right and looked at me and goes, "I just remembered." <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Double sixteen hit, one for one on the doubles for Liz. Look at that. If she averages eighty-eight. This will be over uh, relatively quickly. Tracy, though, again capable of some magic to occur. As soon as we stopped talking on the commentary in the semifinal matchup that we could not see the board of she took off hitting a 101 out followed by a, a 171 in the next leg after that and a 140 she can have moments of brilliance here an unlucky first start again She's not going to like 19 scored there, but. Unfortunately for her, she's playing an opponent that will punish those types of numbers. Tracy going typical 19 routes here. Routes. Yeah, she's been starting on the 19s uh, every, every leg so far, every throw. Not every leg. It's only been one leg. That'd be really <laughs> weird. She just likes that number. Speaking of liking a number, Liz, Liz is just firing in that triple twenty first dart. It seems it's on repeat. The scoring power is there for Liz, who is effectively still on the throw here against the darts after only nine darts thrown.
stays there to leave 1-5-6. She will be first to a finish, even though it's not a high percentage outshot. 76 scored for Tracy. She's going to leave a finish here. Gets 96. That's a great setup dart to put some pressure on the 156. Uh oh, only 40 scored for Liz. Changes the whole leg. Yeah, it does, because Tracy's not too far off with this 1 3 2. Does she just hits a big triple bowl. here. But a good setup here goes a long way. The big dart on dart three, leaving 32. Yeah, that's huge. That is huge right there. Adds a lot of pressure onto this 116. Liz not going to get a look at it. See her peek in to see where it's at. Only 45 scored. Tracy's going to get three darts of this 32. To hold her throw early in this leg, I didn't think this was going to be a possible outcome. But again, those moments of brilliance from Tracy go a long way. Double four needed, though. Got aggressive with all three. The last one, the furthest from the double. Liz might go trip 13 or trip 17. Goes the trip 17 route. Tops. Not close for Liz. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she, it, you could see that one there. She was like, eh. She would be the first person to be like, wow, that was a mile off. And unfortunately, just hitting the double to the left. Bust the double two attempt. So Liz is going to get another look here. Double 10 hits it. 2-0 lead. Still averaging 77. Her three dart average for the tournament in five matches is a 58. Yeah, I think. So stepping it up a lot. There's a couple legs that'll eat away at that, if you feel, if you just get to that double where they just can't quite hit. You right. You know? But yeah, I, I always tell a lot of ladies when I see them that are like, what can I do to be a, you know, a great dart player? I said, honestly, if you average 60. Throughout the duration of an event, you could be a winner. Yep. And Absolutely. You could be an ADO national champion, let's be honest. Now, the level of play on a global level has changed significantly. Oh, we just saw yesterday. Certainly. Bo Greaves averaged 91 to uh, McCrew's uh, 88 in that final. Yeah, what a final that was. Liz, a steady 60 there. See if Tracy can try to start firing in some big numbers. That one did not feel good to her at all, you could tell. Liz has got to be feeling pretty comfortable. Only 44 scored, but still enough to maintain a lead here. Big cover on the last dart. So this weekend has been uh, eventful. There's been actually quite a few events um, that we've already had, even today. Starting at 10 a.m. was mixed triples. 12.30 was men's doubles. 2 p.m. women's singles, which is wrapping up right now. Which for time-wise, 2 p.m. local time, it is approaching 6 p.m., four hours. There were 68 women who signed up for this singles event, which is awesome to see. Liz, only 26 scored, will not leave a finish. Putting Tracy in the driver's seat here to really set up something nicely. Great trip 20 on dart two. 
94 is going to be wonderful there. Crazy, 95 left. That trip 19 will left double 19. 76. Unlucky. 61 remaining. Might shoot at the 25 here to leave double 18. Went the 15 route. So 134 for Liz. Can now just put pressure on the 46. And does not do that at all. Would like to just have all three of those darts back. Double six. 34 remaining. Not the ideal leave in a steel tip double out event. But it doesn't matter if you hit it. Doesn't hit it, but splits it to a 32. Not a bad miss. Liz going at that 25 first there. Smart dart. Oh, hey, bud. Oh, hey, sorry. <laughs> Working on some stuff in the background here. Not going to be able to leave a finish. All right, 32 for Tracy. This to get on the board. Now needs 24. Been there repeatedly. Unfortunately, I've done that as well repeatedly. So Liz, a chance to, uh, she's been gifted. Quite a few attempts at a double here. Double eight. That was way closer to the double 16 than double eight, but finds it on dart three anyway. She's up 3 nothing. Tracy's double's just abandoning her at the wrong time. Liz still averaging above a 60 in the match. This, is, this might be where we start to see Tracy throw her best darts. Down 3 nothing. got nothing else to lose. It might actually relax her to start throwing more more scores in that triple. That was great. A great cover on the last start again. Tracy's scoring very well at the bottom of the board. Liz is scoring very well at the top of the board. Big 140. <laughs> <laughs> she loves those 20s, man. Let me tell you. She's been hitting them a lot today. Now's a good time to switch up. Through the right first dart, second and third darts n were incorrect on trying to leave a finish from 309. Although I think in this situation, she's just trying to think low. Liz threw a great first dart, and 68 is probably the worst, one of the worst numbers you can see after the first dart goes in the trip 20. It's always a frustrating end. Tracy, 95 scored. Does not leave a finish. Sticking to the 19s. Always works on getting it low for her, but it's going to leave some bogeys if she's not paying attention to those types of things, which she was not there. But not going to matter if she gets... First look at a decent finish, and she does. Ooh. Big darts. 18 landed a little loosey-goosey, but hey. 36 after 15. 
And Liz, all she can do is put pressure on this. Again, those moments of brilliance from Tracy. She needs more of them. But more importantly than that, she just needs to buy a double here. And now we'll only most likely get one look at the out from here. Does get a dart at double 16 to stay in the match. Not going to get it done. Doubles abandoning her at the wrong time. Can Liz take out the 78, though? Going to get one dart at double top for the oh. match and hits it with a little fist bump. 4-0 win. A 66.80 final average for Liz Tynan. Talk about turning on the Jets at the right time. Well, That's stepping up your game. There you have it. You're... Now the champion as well as your uh, women's singles champion is Liz Tynan. Here at music, the Music City Classic, 33rd Annual Music City Classic in Nashville, Tennessee, inside the Igloo. Good shots from Liz. We'll be right back with some more action, folks. Don't go anywhere. William Stewart alongside me is Mr. Sean Green. We'll see you in a minute.
All right, guys, welcome back. I am bringing, or we are bringing you a uh, singles, men's singles 501 match. This is only the round of 128. Jason Brandon, defending match play, CDC, or current uh, CDC match play champion, 2022. That was a mouthful for no reason. <laughs> Winning that yesterday here in Nashville. Taking on Donnie Lassie. Donnie is quite the character, I got to be honest with you. You ended up talking to him for about 20 minutes when we got in uh, to the restaurant. He actually defeated P.J. Stewart in the first round, 3-1. to one. Uh, Jason Brandon, Rick Henze, you want to talk about worst draw ever, had to play Jason Brandon in the first round, lost 3 nothing. Jason has been on a tear this weekend. Donnie gets 41. Just taking a quick second to get going. It is a first to three legs here in the preliminary round matches. Uh, once they get to top eight, it will be best of seven. Top four is best of nine, and the final is best of 11. Donnie's a little bit all over the place, but that was a good score, 73. Maybe being up there playing against Jason's. I'm just going to take him a little minute maybe to to find his groove here. That's a good dart. Side note, I think Donnie is actually a sponsor of Jason. There you go. Yeah. It's one of those, uh, do you give him a leg? <laughs> in, good sh in good showing. Or do you remind him why he's paying you? <laughs> <laughs> and he takes out the ton in three one nothing score line for Jason Brandon. Donnie finding the trip 20 for a start. Starting to throw it a little bit harder. Gets 80, but that'll work. Like most likely not against Jason, but against most people. But Jason only a 41. See if Donnie can run a little bit. Donnie has a characteristic of my uh, good friend John, Mink, loud. He, he's, he gets he gets pretty loud. Yeah, he tends to. But it's it's never like a disrespectful loud. He's no. just, he just having fun. He has a l louder inside voice. Some of the greatest people that I respect have really loud inside voices. Anthony Eugenia, Peter Cetera. <laughs> Just a subtle one there. <laughs> oh, I didn't say names, did I? No. I was thinking that to myself. I Hopefully I didn't say that out loud. Guys, thank you so much for joining us here live in Nashville, Tennessee on USA Darts Productions. I'm Sean Green. Will is next to me here, but he gets into uh, 80 things he's doing at one time. The last thing he's going to remember to do is talk. So <laughs> if you feel like I'm talking to myself, ask me questions or something, because I am talking to myself most yeah. likely. Most most of the time you are. Even when I'm in and chatting, normally you're just talking to yourself. So uh, just be honest there. <laughs> Anthony Giordano says, the one dude with the long hair was so committed to that belly rub. So I don't think it. we're talking about either of these guys. But there must have been someone in the background doing a belly rub. Jason Brandon, a 139, just to put a lot of pressure on this 146 from Donnie. Donnie's scoring much better in this leg. You can tell he's settling down just a touch. Jason's been on stage, been been on the stream this entire weekend. This is Donnie's first time on it. It can uh You're never going to say out loud that it gets to you a little bit to, to do it, but it does. It adds a little extra adrenaline. 86 stayed there. 
That was interesting decision with the lay of his dart and where it was sitting above the trip 20 and that not being the typical route either or either way with 86 and two darts remaining. Double 10, double five. Jason being nice to a sponsor, I think. It's going to give him a look at a double. Ideally. He will get two. Oh, just on the wire. Double 10. Unable to hit the double. He knows that in every opportunity that he is left with the double, he's got to pretty much be perfect on it. As now Jason's trying just to clean it up. Unable to do so. Goes back to five. Donnie's going to get three more. At a double here. Double 10. There it is. And dart number two. One to one score line. Jason's done his job as a sponsored player. Now he can just get down to business. <laughs> and I'm going to laugh if he throws like 12 darter or 11 darter. <laughs> in his <laughs> last two legs. It's like, what? I gave you one. Tommy Robershaw saying, let's go Triple D. Donnie Lassie. Yeah, I guess Donnie is part of that uh, shoot for the moon crew down there in Huntsville, Alabama. Okay. Yeah, so uh, that's what he was conversating with us about last night. That's not a word. Conversating? <laughs> Conversating. Conversating. Conversing. Conversing. <laughs> that's my Kansas boy coming out there. Uh, it's actually a common mistake because conversing sounds so weird. Hey, you know what? Don't be calling out my mistakes, okay? <laughs> I have to on that one as an English teacher. Well, or else, or else I'm never going to get hired again. <laughs> As an English teacher, politely, politely go on with your English and get out of here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I know what you really wanted to say there, and it had some expletives. <laughs> and I'm surprised that you were able to withhold. Correct. Certainly correct there, sir. You don't have to confirm it. I already knew. <laughs> Donnie's only averaging around 56. Jason up to 71. It's almost like... Never mind. Jason's just going to try and stomp on his throat now. A 137 is a great setup dart. Eric Damon goes conversationing. That's not right, either, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate the try. It's just conversing. 16 for tops. Double 10. There it is. Gets it on dart three. Two to one lead here for Jason Brandon. And uh, Donnie was back on 320 when Jason took that out. So I might have been joking about the being nice to your sponsor and then stepping on his throat. He kind of did that in that last leg. Aaron, I try to teach people about darts and grammar. It's the beauty of hiring me for, for a show. <laughs> Both. One time. Kelly Gallagher asks, anyone figure out if Jason has a nickname? Ah, uh, good question. Um, I haven't heard of one for Jason yet. I haven't either. JB is what comes to mind as just an initial. But yeah, just... Quick JB. Yeah. What time? What time they'll get one here, I bet you? Big triple first dart. If I was, oh, look at this. Looking to fill it up. Fill it up. he does. Boom goes the dynamite. 180 for Jason Brandon. And he is putting uh, his uh, foot on the throat here of Donnie Lassie. You can tell Donnie just not comfortable up there on that stage. But to even attempt it against the current CDC match play champion, uh, I'm not going to go play J Jason Brandon in front of 79 people on a live <laughs> stream or 150 or whatever it is. No, thank you. Does not sound fun. I've experienced a whooping. Uh, on a live stream before. Um, your fair share, sir. Your fair share. What do you mean fair share? Uh. I'm just thinking of one specific example. Why are you throwing up all the others? <laughs> 17 for 32. 
one dart at it, but he'll be back even if he misses it. He does go inside, so unless Donnie adds a couple of darts to his repertoire, 244 is not going to go. And unable to leave a finish. Jason Brandon for the match. Double eight. Now it's got to be awkward for him here. Hits ah. it anyway. As soon as I say that, every time they just hit their number. <laughs> I'm going to stop saying it. It's a guarantee to work every time. Well, well, well as they say, 80% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> Just a real quick while we've got it. How about a big congratulations to our winner in the women's singles 501. How about Liz Tynan pulling off the win 4-0 over Tracy Firetag? Absolutely. Great uh flyer you put together here in the last 30 minutes <laughs> i mean i'm jealous hey we we got it together we we made it happen that's what counts here is uh once again the 2022 music city classic here in nashville tennessee thanks for joining us for our coverage of this one definitely uh been fun will stewart here sean green right next to me hey yo we got some more action coming your way folks don't go far we'll be right back Alrighty, folks, looks like we're going to go ahead and shut the stream down and come right back with another one here shortly. That way you can get notified when we go live with another match. That way we don't sit you, just leave you sitting in here for potentially just a second or two before we get our next one. So, uh, and Plus, this will help us out throughout the duration of the night to get through it. So uh, we'll see you in a moment with some more action here from Music City. Hit that notification button so that you are notified when we go back live. I'm telling you, it works. Just do it. Do it. Just do it. All right, guys, bye. <laughs> 